What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. This is the Hustle and Soul Review, Season 3, Episode 5, Brooklyn 911. Okay, let me just apologize now. I know the episode came on last night, and you're getting this video late. My apologies, okay? Um, a bitch just had a lot going on. I had to take my braids down. I had to do homework. I had a dentist appointment this morning. I'm, I had my, my child, just my husband. It was, it was just a lot. It was a lot. Y'all pray for me, but I'm here and I'm giving you the review. So thank you for that. Um, y'all like my hair? Yeah. Black women and us, us, our hair, we, we just had to, oh. <sighs> Anyways, so the episode starts off with Cola and John. They are finally sitting down talking with whoever this mystery person is. But again, we find out that it is Eric, his roommate, who he's been living with in New York for the last seven years. So apparently, Cola has already known that John John has dated both men and women, and she's been okay with that because according to her, they were supposed to be in an open relationship, and open means you just have sex with these people, and then you bring it back to me. But he went and he flipped the script, and he done got feelings involved in it, and now Cola don't know what to do with that. But his feelings towards um, his friend Eric are, are pretty strong and pretty for real. And then again, you got to think about it. Y'all been living together for seven years? I know it's a lot been going on up in that house for the last seven years. And John John says that he loves both of them and he doesn't want to lose any one of them and he knows it's selfish and he wants to keep both of them. Homie, you can't do that. You can't do that. But then again, Cola. 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 Really? Really, Cola? You think you're going to compete with a man? Not saying that, that you can't. You, well, well, this is what I'm saying is as a woman... I don't, I'm not okay. First of all, I'm not okay being in an open relationship, okay? That's number one. Number two, I'm not okay with being in an open relationship with my man is in another relationship with a man. That's just me personally. I can't speak on nobody else. That's just me. That's just what I'm saying. That's all that I'm saying. You know, to you, you do what you want. You know what I'm saying? That's just what I'm saying. And the big thing about it is John has to hide the fact that he's gay from his family. His family, I uh, imagine it's a lot of really um, big machismo men in the family. And so he cannot come out as being gay or bisexual, which really the issue ultimately boils down to is that this man is gay. He has been using Cola as his beard this whole time because he is gay and he just can't come out and be comfortable and be who he is. But listen here, John John, if you ever see this, let me let you know. Son, you gay, son. You gay and it's okay. It's okay, but bruh. You can't be doing this with this girl like that because you're messing her head up like this, giving her false hope that you're going to be able to go. She going to be able to, y'all going to be together one day and y'all going to have a family. No, that's not going to happen. Live your happy best gay life and stop playing with this girl like that. That don't make no sense. You wrong for that. You wrong for that. This whole episode, let me just let y'all know now. The, ep the name of this episode should have been You Got Me Fucked Up. Because it was just too much shit going on that in regular life, you got me fucked up. I'm not finna deal with this shit. And my man, sleep with another man, is one of the things. You got me fucked up. That's not finna goddamn happen. But um, homeboy um, Eric tells um, Cola, because she's getting into it with him. She's like, well, um, at the end of the day, I love him too, and I'm going to fight for him too. But Eric got his place, because Eric is letting him know, like, look here, at the end of the day, he's a grown-ass man, and eventually he's going to come to his senses. And Cola's like, well, what do you mean he's going to come to his senses? He going to come to his senses that he gay. He going to come to his senses that he gay. That's what it is. Moving right along from that. So back at the pink teacup, it's popping. Because see, after that little cheesy-ass, ratchet-ass commercial that they did where they was in the pool, Lawrence was in a king chair, bitches in chicken costumes twerking, talking about... After that ratchet-ass commercial that they did, it went viral. And so it got so many people in there, like Anna said it would. And it's a line around the corner. Lawrence is like, he's he, he's stressed out. He's popping off at the staff because it's a line around the corner. And he can't do nothing but admit that Anna was right. That old ratchet-ass commercial brought them in business. And they are doing good from that. So, um... He's just in a badass mood all day because he still got on his mind that prenup that he needs to show Anna that he has not shown to her just yet. He know Anna is crazy. And so he's just kind of stressed out. He waiting because, you know, he, he going to tell this bitch what's popping. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
Fandy calls Lawrence and tells Lawrence that the roof is leaking. It had been leaking for a while now. She called the superintendent, the landlord, whatever, told the landlord about it. And they just come in and they just patching the shit up. They in Brooklyn. They look they like they look like they're in the hood of Brooklyn too. I've been to Brooklyn before, so don't nobody that's if by chance somebody from Brooklyn watching this, don't get mad. Y'all know good and fucking well that it's a lot of parts of Brooklyn that's hood. And it's it's a little nasty, just like it's a lot of parts of Austin. That's hood and they look nasty. But anyways, from that, they ain't doing nothing to patch up the leak. You know what I'm saying? And he's telling Lawrence this over the phone. Lawrence is, he seems concerned, but he's not all that concerned because he really got this whole issue with this prenup on his mind. So he kind of put that to the back of his mind and he's really focusing on what he got to tell Anna. So later on that night, him and Anna go on a date. He rents out this beautiful yacht, beautiful, beautiful yacht. And he's got the, the whole thing. They've got it to themselves. He's got a catered dinner that comes in. He's serving her favorite crab legs. Let my husband do some shit like that for me. That's what I'd be thinking too. Why are you buttering me up like some bread? What are you doing? What are you up to? But he know he got to lay down the fucking foundation because what he about to tell her, she about to blow the motherfucking roof off. So he trying to get it all nice. And so he's pumping her up. He's telling her that, um, you know, you've done so much for me these um, years that we've been together. You've helped me build my brand. You've helped me build up my restaurant. And I need to protect myself um, in, in a lot of ways because love can make people do, like Deborah Cox say, love can make you do some crazy things. And so because of that, he is a man. He knows that he will be a man. And he's not worried about her. He hit that with you, with that it's not you, it's me shit. Gonna tell this bitch. Here, I want you to sign a prenup. And the terms of the prenup basically are if he cheats, she decides to leave, she don't get shit. What? Nigga, what? This motherfucker flat out told her, I love you. I want to be with you. I want to marry you. I want a future with you. But I know me as a man. And I know there are certain things that I just can't shake. And I've been praying to God for him to deliver this lust from me. So if by chance in the future that we are married, I just want to be secure that what I've worked so hard for will still be mine. Nigga, you got life and bullshit all messed up. I mean, this nigga changed the game when he said this right here. Like, I know niggas that have said some bullshit before, but my nigga, you changed the whole game when you came out and when you told her this. And instantly, yes, she gets pissed as she has every right to. Like she said, nigga, wait a minute, after I've helped you build everything, the nerve of you to say, there's a possibility, yes, I'm going to cheat on you. So if you cheat on me and you decide to leave, you can't leave with shit. Nigga, you got me fucked up. Once again, should have been the name of the show. You got me fucked up, or at least the name of this episode. Because that, 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 that's crazy as hell. And then he further tried to justify the shit by saying, look, the fact that I'm being an honest black man to you and I'm telling you up front why I am, you must be at your goddamn mind if you can't respect that. Excuse me, what? Come again, Baker. Ba what? Nigga, respect you because you got the balls to tell me that if we get married, you gonna cheat on me? Fuck you and everything about you. And matter of fact, fuck mo, fuck four motherfuckers that look like you. You crazy at your goddamn mind? <laughs> Ooh, baby, 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 couldn't be me. And like Anna said, you've doomed our marriage before we even got married. You ain't even said I do yet. And nigga, you done already fucked it up. Cause of this shit. She lucky though. She lucky he didn't throw, she, no, he lucky that she didn't throw that motherfucker overboard. Cause y'all already know Anna, she, all, she off the motherfucking chain. So back at the restaurant, he's all broken up because of what happened with him and Anna and the conversation. And like a lot of typical dirty dog niggas, what does he do? He calls the one place that he feels he can find solace and peace. He calls his side bitch, Thandy. You, once again, have got me fucked up. And we just gonna move right the fuck along from that. Even called his homeboy. 
to go and check on her at the restaurant, see what's going on, because he said it ain't like her not to answer the phone for me. You got... Nigga, who the fuck is you? Girl, ain't no damn way. Noob, 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 noob. So Cola and uh, Big Mama Blue, a.k.a. Nikki, they meet for lunch. And Cola is telling Nikki about the conversation that she had or the lunch that she had with John John and his boyfriend, Eric, and herself. And she tells, um, you know, Cola tells Nikki about him fucking around with the roommate. And Nikki's expression, y'all, was so goddamn funny. All of that would have been me. The minute she told her, you know, he's messing around with his roommate, who is Eric, she was like, well, he's a man. It's a man, but it's a man, though. Oh, and then you was there when he came, and then you met him, too. Oh, no. Once again, you'd have me fucked up. And Nikki gives her some good advice. She tells her, look, baby, sweetie, boo-boo, baby sis, you don't deserve that. You don't deserve to play second fiddle to nobody. And then, it, it let's just call... Your, your man is fucking around with another man. That's not okay. I'm sorry. For me, that's that's not okay. It's not all right with a woman, and especially not okay with a man. Because it's just, if you are going to live your, your lifestyle, be comfortable with who you are. But I just feel like he's using her. That's what ultimately the issue that I have with it. He's using her because he's not living the life that he wants to live. And that's messed up about that. And so she gives us some good ass advice, but she Cola tells her, look, I'm not going to give up fighting for my man. That's me. That's mine. That's, that's boo-boo. That's, that's, that's zaddy. I'm going to fight for that. Mm -hmm. While he's slinging that thing back and forth between you and a uh, homeboy. Girl, bye. So back at the restaurant, Anna brings back that uh, prenup to Chef LP, but she brings him a good ass revised version as she should. And she revised some of the terms. Some of those terms include if that motherfucker gained weight, she gets $50,000, which seems reasonable to me. If she gains weight, he has to pay for liposuction for her, which seems pretty reasonable for me. And then if he does cheat, she gets to take everything, which quite honestly, I don't agree with that. I myself would have put in there, if you cheat, hey, I get 40%. I'm leaving you a up, nigga. And I won't go no lower than 40%. I'm none. Not 39, not 38, not 35, 40%. Otherwise, don't get married. So if the nigga does screw around or whatever, you still got a fighting chance to get something. I'm just saying. Don't fucking do it. And he looking like, uh, what the fuck? She like, nigga, you want to be petty? I can be petty too. Call me Petty LaBelle. We can be petty together. And of course, he's mad. She's like, sign this motherfucker. Uh, I gotta go. I gotta go. Don't talk to me. Sign this motherfucker. So anyway, the twins are on the beach. Dominic and Steph and Dominic, Steph, Steph, whatever the fuck their name is. They on the goddamn beach. They out there doing their modeling thing. Steph, Dominic is for real about doing this, this modeling thing. He's out there. They in their little speedos and shit with their little, you know, balls to the side and little thing or whatever. They out there doing their little modeling thing. And Steph, I mean, Dominic is doing good. Steph, on the other hand, he just out there wasting these motherfucking people's time. He out there frolicking, jumping around in the water, wasting time. This man is trying to be cool with him about it, but he was just like, look here, motherfucker. Look, your brother came out here and did the damn thing, and now here you come. You up in here fucking around doing stuff. What are you doing? You wasting my time. You wasting the goddamn waves. You wasting the way of my film. You wasting the sun. Once again, you got me fucked up. As a photographer, he should have told they got damn ass that. I, that that would have been me. So, um, Big Mama Blue, aka Nikki, she shows up to um to the beach to um support the guys as they're doing their little modeling thing or whatever. So she tells them about John John and Cola and the little threesome that they got going on. And you can tell the twins was like, what? Oh, wait, so it's a dude he fucking around with. Because this whole time, she's, well, at least Cola's been having them to believe, which I think Cola believes as well, that maybe he was sleeping with another female. And so, once again, everybody's like shocked. Oh my God. But as good friends, they vow that they are going to help Cola find somebody who wants her and who wants to be with her because baby, boo boo, baby says, no, he don't want you. 
Bless her heart, though. Bless her heart. So Thandie called Chef, uh, Chef LP to tell him that, motherfucker, guess what? The roof caved in. And you want to know why it caved in? Because your monkey ass that I told about the motherfucker leaking didn't come and do any goddamn thing about it. So it leaking and fell on my goddamn head. She says that she was behind the bar, that, um... She was cleaning up and that the roof fell on her ass. Anna's so goddamn insensitive. Anna was like, that's what she get. I hope it concussioned her ass. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Anna, you fucked up for that. On a side note, Anika, po, tink, tink, Anika. Anika brings Nikki to the motherfucking spa to get their buttholes lasered. First of all, what depth of hair do you have on your, in the crack of your ass that you got to go and get your ass lasered? What is wrong? Ma'am, I beg your pardon? You finna go get your butthole lasered. Girl, first of all, why would you even tell nobody that you got a problem? Why would you tell somebody that that is an issue that you're struggling with and you got to go and get done? You got to get your butthole lasered. Girl, you little nasty bitch. So, they up in, well, no. And Nika's up in there getting it done. And Nikki like, no, nah, I'm not with this shit. That would have been, bitch. Ma'am. That is not what we do. Good God. But anyways, um... So, um, John John called a meetup to talk about, you know, what, what happened in prior and the, you know, the meetup, whatever that they have. And y'all, this was a sad scene for me. It really, really was. First of all, though, I did notice when they reached over to hug each other after they hug real tight, he heard it like, oh, lean back and stretched. Yeah, because he didn't want to kiss her ass. I caught that. You threw it out there and I caught it. I seen what the fuck you did. But anyways, like I said, this was a really sad scene, though, for real, some real shit. Because John John is saying that he has been stressed dealing with his, his have him having to deal with his sexuality. He don't know if he want to be gay on Monday, straight on Tuesday, bisexual on Wednesday. He going to be nasty as hell on Friday. And then Sunday, you know he going to have to be super saved. So he don't know what it's doing. And it's going so, it's stressing him out so much to where he is drinking. And he has had thoughts of not even wanting to be there because he's having to deal with this. And y'all, that's sad. What was the boy's name just not too long ago that committed suicide? Well, he committed suicide because he was being bullied because of his sexuality. But that's just that just relates to what John is feeling. John John is feeling because... He, he, he's confused about himself and he doesn't know what to do. He's in love with Cola. He's in love with Eric and he, he wants to be accepted by his family. He wants to be accepted by society. But at the same time, the family that he's from doesn't even accept him for who he is. And it was just a real, real, real sad scene. He was crying. Cola was crying. But, um, Ultimately, he tells Cola that he wants her to find the love and the happiness that she deserves without him. Because mentally, he's not in the headspace to be there for her because he is just dealing with a lot. And I respect him for that. As a man, as, as a human being, I respect him for that. Not to keep carrying that girl on like that. And then, too, he's got strong feelings for homeboy. And, you know, you, 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 I mean, I feel like what he did was right. I support you on that, John John. I'm all the way back with you. I, I, I love you for that. Love you for that. So, Chef LP shows up to the pink tea cup, and um, Thandy is there to greet him. Of course, they do their little embrace. Mm -hmm. She said she was mad. Anyways, I know he got the draws when he went to New York. I know he got them cheeks when he went to goddamn New York. You can't tell me. Nigga, if you finna had this bitch sign a prenup and y'all ain't even together yet, yeah, you went there and you fucked Thandy. Anyways, so she shows him the restaurant, and it is bad. That shit looked bad on the inside, y'all. I feel so bad for him. And he said they've been there for 10 years, and they survived so much in 10 years. And to just have the roof cave in, and it even fucked up the inside of the kitchen, too. Like, it's it's bad. It really looked like somebody came through there and ransacked the motherfucker. It looked bad. I don't know if motherfuckers came in there and was looting or what, but it looked really, really bad in there. And, and it's not funny, but... Lauren 
this is a Jamaican dude, so when he talks, he talks like this. He talks real hard. And he was reflecting back on where he's been and the things he's done in the restaurant. He taught motherfuckers how to cook chicken and sweet potato waffles. That shit, ooh, wait, that sound fucking good. But I taught them how to cook the shrimp and the catfish and the collard greens and all of that. He was, I mean... That was funny the way he was talking, but it was just really sad. And I feel bad for him. And, um, yeah, the episode pretty much ended right there. It's, it was, it, this episode was good. It was very entertaining, although, again, the name of it should have been You Got Me Fucked Up because a lot of the shit in there would have had Monique fucked up. Um, but, um, it looks like on the next couple of episodes, um, uh, what's that girl name? Anna and Fanny are going to team up together and they got some shit coming for Cola. And I'm here for it, because I want to see it, <laughs> and I will bring it to you. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, that was Hustling Soul. Let me know what you guys thought about it. I want to do some more videos, some more reviews on some shows. So if there's some shows that you guys want me to review, you want me to check out, drop them down in the comments, let me know, um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Y'all like my shirt? This is Golden Girls. I'm rocking the Golden Girls today. See y'all in the next video. Peace. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala!